1982, the world would catch a fleeting glimpse of a man who belonged above the clouds, a man who undid the bondage of the laws of men and nature, and when he cast those shackles from his ankles, he rose above us all. And those lucky enough to bear witness to this triumph of will over reality were gifted with a view of a man drifting the skies in his lawn chair, a gun in his hand, kept afloat miles in the air by nothing but balloons. Sadly, he was not long for this world. He is risen. Today I want to tell you about the life, death and resurrection of Lawn Chair Larry. Born in 1949, Larry Walters lived an ordinary life. He worked as a truck driver, he lived with his fiance in California, and he often spent his evenings just relaxing on his lawn chair, looking up at the passing jets overhead. But Larry saw more in the clouds than just the planes, he saw himself. Having had dreams of flying since a very young age, Larry joined the Air Force in early adulthood, but his poor eyesight disqualified him from becoming a pilot. Although content with the simple life he led, Larry decided that he could not let his dream pass him by and he would have to find his own way off the ground. Larry did what any man would do in this situation and turned his launch air into a makeshift aircraft by attaching several dozen helium weather balloons for lift and water jugs for ballast. He christened his craft the Inspiration One. Bit of a letdown on the name there to be honest, I mean it's serviceable, it's okay, but you could have gone with the Sitfire, the Liftwaffe, Chair Force One. Larry equipped himself with a parachute in case of emergency, a CB radio, an altimeter, a camera, a sandwich and a coke, and a pellet gun that he intended to use to pop balloons to bring himself back down to earth. His plan was to float not too far above the houses and drift over the Mojave Desert. Maybe he was trying to bypass Deathclaw Valley, who knows. <coughs> now it may surprise you to learn that a man who intended to fly in a lawn chair tied to balloons did not put as much thought into this plan as it probably deserved. The naming of the chair was probably the first giveaway. You see, Larry neglected to figure out just how many balloons would be required to achieve his ideal altitude of 30 feet, which led to less than optimal launch in July 1982. When his fiancée and friends cut the tether, Larry rocketed up to 16,000 feet. He is risen. The Inspiration One was also not heading for the Mojave to the east, but to the west and into airport traffic. At this point, the cold from the altitude had made Larry numb and he was now afraid that popping any balloons would throw the chair off balance and dump him out. He radioed in a mayday and the authorities were alerted to his presence, although there wasn't much they could do except alert air traffic control as he passed through an airport approach corridor. After almost an hour, Larry was headed towards the Pacific and decided if he didn't try to lower himself, he was going to be in a spot of bother. Mustering up his courage, he popped a balloon with his pellet gun, which to Larry's relief did not send him hurtling to the ground three miles below. He popped a few more balloons before the pellet gun slipped from his hands, presumably maiming somebody on the ground. A fairly serious blunder there, Larry, old chum. With the pellet gun being your only way of reliably making it down to the ground in one piece, it's a fairly egregious mistake to drop it. Although when you think about it, using a pellet gun to control your altitude in a makeshift aircraft was probably not an idea destined for greatness in the first place. Thankfully, Larry did not have to go to his last resort of making use of the parachute, as he managed to pop enough balloons to start bringing him back down but he was coming down quite hard. Not hard enough to paint the street, but hard enough to paint an ugly hospital bill. Lucky Larry was spared being crippled by getting tangled in some power lines. I have read conflicting reports on whether this broke the power lines or whether the authorities had the power shut off in anticipation of Larry landing on them and being fried, but either way, the area was now without power. Larry climbed down to safety where he was greeted by a small crowd of astonished onlookers and less pleasantly, the police. After a few months of trying to figure out exactly what laws Larry broke, the Federal Aviation Administration charged Larry with operating a civil aircraft for which there is not currently in effect an airworthiness certificate and operating an aircraft within an airport traffic area without establishing and maintaining two-way communications with the control tower. Larry was slapped with a $1,500 fine, but his flight had earned him other attention too. The media dubbed him Lawn Chair Larry and he was invited to guest in talk shows such as Late Night with Letterman. With his newfound fame, Larry quit his truck driving job to seize the opportunity to become a household personality. This is where Larry's story takes a turn for the worst. 
Although he initially saw some success as a motivational speaker, fame was fleeting for Lawn Chair Larry and he soon returned to his former quiet life. An avid nature enthusiast, he did volunteer work for the US Forest Service. His long-term relationship ended and he had difficulty finding steady work. On the 6th of October 1993, Larry Walters hiked deep into the Angeles National Forest and shot himself in the heart. He was 44 years old. But the story of Launcher Larry does not end there. The man that had captured so many people's imaginations and so many people's hearts would find new life as his spirit was kept alive by the popularity of cluster ballooning, a new sport and recreational activity inspired by Larry's Launcher flight. Brazilian Catholic priest and human rights activist Adelaire Antonio de Carli would perform a daring balloon flight in 2008 in a fundraising event to help raise money for a spiritual rest stop for truck drivers. He was lost at sea and the lower half of his body turned up near an oil rig two months later. Oh, okay, maybe not a great example. Kent Couch drew international attention in 2007 for his launch air flights across the state of Oregon, even successfully traveling 240 miles across state and into Idaho. In 2010, Jonathan Trapp crossed the English Channel by cluster balloon. 2015, Daniel Boria flew around Calgary in Canada before parachuting safely to the ground. Tom Morgan flew around South Africa in 2017. So you see, Launch Air Larry has had quite the impact on the world. I hope this video is a fitting tribute to this king. The success of his Launch Air flight was nothing short of a miracle, one so impressive it spawned countless imitators. And in that fashion, Launch Air Larry lives on. He is risen. Hi guys, I hope you liked the video. If you regularly enjoy my videos, please consider checking out my merch store where you can pick up merch supporting my channel, as well as items commemorating some of the topics I cover in my videos. I make these all myself and my goal is to really make the best designs for these topics. So if you want a Balloon Fest t-shirt or you want a Killdozer t-shirt, I want you to know that I put time into making these the best ones out there. I make about $5 for every one that I sell, so if you do like them, it does help me a lot to pick some up. If you can't do that, but you still want to support me, please follow my Twitter account, subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, you know the rest. And hey, look, if you're not interested in any of that and you just want to watch the videos, well then, thank you for watching them, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks, guys.